So you found today's Net Linked episode. Great job. What do you want, a golden statue? Well, you're actually out of luck. Even if we did want to give you one, they were all given away last night. <laughs> but we can give you some tech news, if you're interested. <laughs> But first, an important announcement regarding the channel and Netlinked. Uh, we are moving studios tomorrow. That's Tuesday, March 1st. So uh, we, prob we, we definitely won't have Netlinked tomorrow, quite possibly the next day as well. But we will be posting some moving vlogs and maybe we'll talk about tech news in there or something. The blue wall is gonna be the same, but we might have some new sets. So it'll be very interesting. There's only three of us in the studio full time. So we'll have to see how fast we can get up and running. And Jack needs to, Jack has a separate special announcement as well. So tomorrow's Tuesday, since there's no Netlinked on a Tuesday. That's right. And it's the first Tuesday of the month. I'm gonna do the Tuesday today. On a Tuesday. Got it. Made sure we got that in there. Okay, to the news. Microsoft has put the HoloLens up for pre-order, not the consumer version, mind you. It's the HoloLens Development Edition, and it'll cost you 3,000 bucks. The headset does come with the Bluetooth clicker that leaked last week, so, I mean, that, that pretty much explains the price right by itself. The HoloLens is an independent computer, so it's got an x86 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, 64 gigs of storage, 6 cameras with various functions, 4 microphones, an ambient light sensor, and a custom holographic processing unit to make sense of all the data. Now, of course, this version is meant for developers, but that's not stopping Microsoft from throwing three free games in with it, one of which is Young Conquer, showing a much friendlier and less foul-mouthed version of the old Rare character. Oh, and what about the display? Well, Microsoft says it's got two 16 by 9 light engines that together can produce 2.3 million light points. So, if you were looking for a lot of light points, you know where to find them. Pre-orders for the headset will begin shipping March 30th. The Pi Foundation, and that's Pi, not Pi. Sorry if, sorry if that made you hungry. Anyways, the Pi Foundation has announced the Raspberry Pi 3, the latest version of the microprocessor board. The new version now has integrated 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1, meaning it's pretty much good to go right out of the box. The Pi 3 also has a new 1.2 gigahertz 64-bit ARM Cortex-853 processor, which is about 35% faster than the previous Pi 2. Speaking of the number 35, that's how many dollars it costs, the same as its predecessor. Of course, there's still the Pi Zero available for five bucks as well, if you want the no calorie version. Microsoft has tried to make a big deal out of supporting the PC community in the last couple of years, but now some gamers have noticed some stark limitations on the Windows Store version of Rise of the Tomb Raider. VSync is forcibly enabled with no off option. There's no SLI or Crossfire support. There's no .exe file, so you can't even add it as a non-Steam game if you want. The only screen mode available is borderless full screen. It doesn't work with fraps or custom mouse binding software. <sighs> Pretty much all of these features aren't a problem in the Steam version. Many of the issues are a result of the Windows Store version being adapted using the Universal Windows Platform, the framework that allows Windows 10 apps to be used on desktop and mobile. Okay, so simple. Just buy the game on Steam. Well, that won't be an option for Quantum Break, which will be a Windows Store exclusive. So Phil, when you say you want to support the PC platform, do you actually mean you want to turn PC gamers into console gamers? Ah, yes, see. That's what I thought. I just wanted you to admit it. You know what time it is. Quick bits again. I think, I think someone did say quick bits. I think it was, uh, it was me. Quick bits again. Whoa. I gotta go rethink my whole life now. Ah, but first, quick bits. HTC launched pre-orders for the Vive VR headset today, and yes, I know, it's the Vive, but... Vive? I don't know, I like Vive better. I'll say Vive next time. I just, I don't like it as much. The Wu-Ting One, wow, what a name, is an analog mechanical keyboard, meaning it knows exactly how far down you're pressing a given key. So you can do things like control your movement speed in games. You're gonna have to have some crazy finger control though, I think. AMD's Roy Taylor has posted a picture of a PC containing the dual GPU Fiji card, which could be called the R9 Fury X2 or Gemini, we still don't know. But we can see it looks like a longer R9 Nano. 
Not surprising. Gigabyte has launched a couple of Xeon compatible gaming motherboards. They use the C236 and C232 chipsets, but Gigabyte is calling them the X170 and X150 because X's and Z's are for gamers, man. Yeah. Microsoft has confirmed their shuttering Project Astoria, their tool for porting Android apps to Windows 10. Meanwhile, the iOS porting tool gets the green light. <sighs> Feels like 2008 all over again. Google and researchers in Toronto have published a paper on a six year long study measuring reliability and performance of SSDs, and some of the findings are pretty interesting, such as the fact that common MLC flash drives are often just as reliable as high end SLC drives. Ooh, scandalous. If you want to check out all the findings, they're in the forum post linked in the description, along with the rest of today's news sources. Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the tech news. Except my name isn't Daniel, it's Keys. Damn, Keys! Doesn't have the same. <laughs> Damn, Daniel! If you're in the Lower Mainland area, guess what? The NCIX crew is going to be at the Virtual Battle Royale Fighting Game Tournament this weekend at Spacecraft in Burnaby. The tourney is on March 5th and 6th, but we'll be there this Saturday, March 5th, from around 10 a.m. to 7-ish, I think? Playing games, hanging out, vlogging, and being generally ridiculous, as we are. They've got Street Fighter V, Mortal Kombat X, and my personal favorite, Super Smash Bros. That's Melee, Project M, and Wii U that they'll have there, because I'm not cool enough to be good at the old school fighters. Tickets are 20 bucks for both days, or 15 for one, but they're 25 at the door. So if you want to come hang with us and maybe challenge us to a game or two, make sure you buy your tickets early, click here, or the link in the description for all the details, and... Prepare yourself. All right, that's it for Netling Daily, guys. Thanks for watching. Click here to watch more videos. Follow us on social media over here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, I'm off to train up for Smash Bros. Except, I don't actually have the game. So, I'll have to go to Brian's place to practice. Brian! Prep the controller. He's not here, actually. But, Brian, I'm coming. You better prep the... Get it ready. I, I play Ike.